As the fallout from a series of sexual assault scandals involving Hockey Canada continues, one advocate says the organization isn't listening. Retired NHL player Sheldon Kennedy is a fierce advocate for sexual abuse survivors, and he is repeating his call for a leadership change. His comments came after the organization's board of directors said it's supporting the executive team despite calls for leadership to resign. Hockey Canada has been under intense scrutiny for its handling of sexual assault allegations against members of previous men's junior teams. However, Laurel Walzak, an expert on sport media and sport business, says this is not even the tip of the iceberg. Well, Professor Walzak from the Global Experiential Sport Lab at Toronto Metropolitan University joins us now. Ma'am, welcome to Forum Daily. Great. Thanks for having me. All right. So the latest developments in this case saw Hockey Canada's board of directors supporting the executive team. So what sort of message is this organization putting out amid this investigation? Well, this is a very big question because I think that they look, they need to look at how each member is complicit. What was their role in leading up to this and the executive team and the current CEO? And I don't believe right now the way that things exist, even with their action plan in place, that they really understand what needs to be changed. And this is a culture change that's going to take time and it starts at the top. And on that note of culture change, uh, it was revealed that in addition to the sexual assault uh, cases dating back to 2003 and 2018, Hockey Canada paid over $8.9 million for sexual abuse settlements to 21 complainants. And this dates back all the way back to 1989. So uh, why hasn't there been a change to this uh, toxic culture yet? This is frightening. This is absolutely frightening. And this all comes down to accountability. It comes down to denial, the bystander effect. One of the things that we said in the letter is that this is passive aggressive and the fact that they're in denial. So, you know, they have not been accountable to date. We've not been seeing the transparency that we need to see with this national sport organization. They've been able to use the funding in a way that let's say has been under, you know, under the radar for lack of better words. And the very fact that they have not been accountable by the government and then has gotten past the government as well. The one thing that I would definitely say is that we've been saying this repeatedly as researchers and for someone that has also worked in the hockey space, this is a problem that all of a sudden has surfaced and and exposed. And we're gonna see more of this. And if it wasn't exposed and it hadn't surfaced, would we still be where we are, um, where we were before uh, this all came to fruition with Hockey Canada and showing that they were actually hiding this and making settlements? The problems are not rare. I don't like the way that this is being framed and either do we in the letter. We need to demonstrate that this is widespread. And uh, on the on the note of accountability, what do we know so far about the repercussions that players or coaches that were subject to these uh, sexual abuse cases, uh, what did they face? Yeah, this is horrible because this is where fear comes into play, where psychological effect comes into play. You know, players could be ostracized, uh, shunned, alienated. This is the whole point of exclusion. And there are so many pressures to conform. And if they don't conform, then what happens to them? They could become, as I said, ostracized. And the anxiety and the psychological trauma that exists with these players is so unfair. And, you know, we think about this from the standpoint of what we want to do in the pyramid of hockey is we build the grassroots and we want to win um, at, you know, international levels. But at the same time, maybe we're actually not having the best players in place because some of those players have already been ostracized. And I think the very fact that there's this general exclusion that exists is frightening and it's so unfair and it totally negatively impacts the participation level in hockey. People don't want to come forward and they're fearful to come forward. So what what needs to be done to address this toxic culture that is not only apparent in Hockey Canada, Canada, but as you say, in overall sport in Canada? So what are some realistic steps that officials should take here? Well, the first and foremost, I like the fact that they're they're doing a review, not only on the action plan, but on the governance. I think all, not just Hockey Canada, but I'm going to use the word all here, sort of an all or nothing. Uh, sport governance really needs to be re- reviewed in our country. <clears throat> There's a 
researcher George Cunningham that talks about deinstitutionalizing the institution. And this Hockey Canada institution needs to be deinstitutionalized. And, and in effort to be able to change the culture, we need to identify the problems. We need to take a look at where the support is. I love the fact that the government has paused funding. I like the fact that various sponsors have paused funding or halted funding. And we need to make sure that we take a look at um, even things like what are the public interests versus the private interests on the board of governance? Um, who are the gatekeepers? We need more diversity on the boards, more diversity within the workplace to have more perspectives and voice and also the, the accountability. So right now, the way that it is um, protecting the current board and not having them step down, the CEO not stepping down. Uh, is problematic because we don't want these repeat behaviors. And this is not a Band-Aid effect. This is a serious problem, systemic problem that needs to be addressed. Lost to keep our eyes on. Professor Walczak, thank you again for joining us today on Forum Daily. Thank you. We'll be right back.